morning we have good evening and the scalp. Well, try it again. Good evening and welcome to our May 15th, 2018 Ogden City Council meeting. Let the roll call reflect that all council members are present and we are grateful also for your presence. It's good to see a good contingent of scouts in the audience today. And uh, with no further ado, we will turn the time to Vice Chair Nadolski for the pledge. Thank you, Chair Heyer. I've invited Bridger to come up and lead us through the pledge. He's gonna give us a little intro before he starts. Over here, buddy. Come up to the... Uh, the, the There's a policeman. He might shoot you if he come up here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm Budja Hatch, and we're doing the I'm a citizen sip in my nation met badge and uh, please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you want to have your the rest of your uh, troop come up and uh, tell us who they are and what they're working on, we'd love to have you. Now would be the time. Everybody get up. Come on, come on up. Come on. Uh, I am Ryan Tolman and I'm working on the citizenship in the community merit badge and we have to come here and listen to a city council meeting. Great, right. welcome. <laughs> we do too. Yeah. I do not get to. Yeah. Hi, I'm Camden Simpson and I'm doing what Ryan Tolman is doing. So. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Coy Smith and I'm doing Citizen of the Nation. My name is William, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm Dominic Berzet, and I am doing citizenship of the nation. My name is Jesse Crown. I'm doing the same thing with uh, the boys. Thank you, you guys. Appreciate y'all being here. Love your uniforms, and uh, thanks to your leaders for bringing you. Uh, now, the next thing on our agenda is a moment of silence, so if you would join with us in, in that. Thank you. All right, next item on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Uh, this is uh, the minutes of the joint work session of February 6th, 2018. Council Member Stevens. Yes, they're correct, Chair. And do you wanna make a motion for I us? I make a motion that we accept the minutes that have been presented here for approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Stevens, seconded by Councilmember Blair to approve the minutes. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. That's unanimous. Next uh, item on our agenda is our common consent uh, uh, portion of our agenda. This is two items, uh, reappointments and appointments to the Ogden Trails Network and the Ogden Diversity Commission. Do I have a motion? Mr. Heyer, I make a motion that we adopt the common consent items as presented. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Lopez, second by Councilmember Chaburka. Uh, this is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Oh. As, yeah, is anybody here from either one of those two committees? Yeah, uh, you want to come up and say something? Gonna come and say something. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't planned on it, but my name is Jeremy Shinoda, and um, you're one of your newest uh, diversity commission commissioners. 
and I'm uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve and uh, uh, on behalf of my fellow commissioners. Um, I really appreciate the, the the creation of the commission and the <laughs> multicultural advisory committee before that. Thank you. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay, next item is a public hearing. This is continued from the from May 1st. This is uh, concerning the annual action plan for July 1st to June uh, 2018 to June 30th, 2019. And I think we have, oh, Mr. Ogden. Welcome. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members of the council, the item is a continuation of the public hearing that we had um, on the 1st of uh, May relative to the city's annual action plan. Um, this annual action plan is an application for federal funds for community and economic development. Um, we're an entitlement city and we um, are entitled to receive funds through the community development block grant program and the home program. And we submit a consolidated plan every five years, uh, which is an overall strategy for the use of those funds. And that was adopted in 2015. And each year subsequent to that, we produce an action plan, which is the budget um, and the set of actions that will carry out those strategies. And so we do this every year. And we have a citizen participation uh, process that we go through. The Citizen Advisory Committee reviewed the draft plan on uh, March 6th. And um, the draft plan was pre presented to the council staff um, on uh, March 13th. And then um, there was a public comment period <clears throat> from March 26th to April 25th so that the community could um, have a look at the draft plan. And um, we held a work session with the council on uh, April 3rd. So now we're at the point of adopting the plan. Just quickly, I will indicate um, what's in that plan. <clears throat> the Community Development Block Grant Fund, uh, we received an increase over last year's fund in the amount of $66,000. We have $1,037,949 uh, new dollars in that program. In the home program, we received an increase over last year of $124,663. And our entitlement grant this year is $479,545. The total of the action plan includes um, entitlement funds, new funds, and it includes program funds, which are when we loan funds and, or do projects and we get the money back. So that's program income. And then we have some funds that we um, have carried over that haven't been spent from prior years. The total of that also includes a little bit of city funds that are incorporated into the community and economic development budget. The total of the, of the action plan is just under $6.3 million. Uh, it includes $1.9 million of entitlement funds, um, $1.2 million of program income, and just over $3 million of carryover funds. And those <clears throat> funds are used to carry out the actions. Um, we have a business information center, which is funded at $55,000. Public improvement budget is $650,000. Our infill housing budget is $300,000. Own in Ogden, which is our down payment assistance program, $250,000. Emergency home repair for very low income people um, at $40,000. <clears> and we have another <clears throat> set aside for non a nonprofit housing development organization in the home program of $176,000. Our Quality Neighborhoods Initiative has a total of $2.4 million. And the HELP Loan Fund is just over $1.1 million. In the business development side, we have <clears throat> special economic development projects in the amount of $140,000, small business loan program of $510,000, and our microenterprise loan program of $200,000. The administrative amount that we're allowed to spend um, is $421,000. So that's our, that's the 600. Excuse me. That totals the 6.3 million dollars. So that's a brief summary. Um, we've held work sessions and we've gone over, done a lot of uh, presentations over the uh, projects and programs and budgets. So it's um, it's time for any questions or feedback from the community and um, recommend uh, adopting the uh, resolution to adopt the action plan. Any questions for Ward? 
Is there a certain amount on the carryover that you can only have in, in that, or can you carry over any amount? It's true. Um, we can, we're allowed to carry over in our, in our uh, community development block grant program an amount equal to 1.5 times our annual entitlement. <coughs> so that would be just about $1.5 million. Yes. Just real quick, why, why the increase over what we estimated? Um, I mean, just... Right. Um, well, uh, we estimated, um, because the, the federal budget hadn't been adopted, um, it was supposed to be adopted, normally required to be adopted in, um, for October 1. Um, but they've been doing continuing resolutions, and we didn't know at the time we were doing our draft plan. So they told us just to use our, our um, estimates from last year. So that's what we put in as estimates. And then on May 1st, we received the actual numbers. Okay. Any other questions for Ward? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, this is a public hearing. It was uh, opened on May 1st. It's continued currently, so now would be the time if you'd like to speak to this petition. Seeing no movement, I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion by Vice Chair Nadolsky, seconded by uh, Council Member White to close the public hearing. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Okay, I will look for some resolution to this. Chair Hire, I'll make a motion that we adopt proposed resolution 2018-4 as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Vice Chair Nadalski, seconded by Councilmember Blair to adopt a resolution 2018-4. This is a roll call vote. Councilmember Blair. Aye. Councilmember Chaburka. Aye. Councilmember Lopez. Aye. Councilmember Stevens? Aye. Councilmember White? Aye. Vice Chair Nadolsky? Aye. Chair Heyer? Aye. That passes unanimously. Okay, next item on our agenda is a report from the Planning Commission. This is also an item that was continued from May 1st. Uh, welcome, Mr. Montgomery. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the Council. <clears throat> As you mentioned, this is an item that has been continued, and this is looking at the Planning Commission's recommendation regarding a petition that had been filed to look at amending the development agreement for the uh, project between Lincoln and Grand on the south side of 12th Street. Originally when we received the petition is for this 1.49 acre lot that exists. As you can see the area between uh, Lincoln and Grant has mainly been developed except for this one lot. And the uh, petition uh, stated that they wanted, what they wanted to do was to allow an amendment to allow two buildings on this lot, to allow five monument signs and increase the square footage of the signage allowed in the development agreement. Also to amend the exhibits to allow a new building uh, that would be put in exhibit D, which uh, would be the front building proposed in the project, and then two concept <coughs> plans. One that would be for uh, a back property being a sit-down restaurant or another option for that being a retail space. At that time, the Planning Commission, was, when they reviewed this, gave you a recommendation uh, to approve the modifications, but added some conditions. Uh, one that instead of five signs, it would be four signs, uh, allowing the 375 foot square foot maximum, but have two names on the one sign to allow that to take place. Um, allow the five buildings. Add another option for a possible land use uh, that's in the development agreement to add multiple family either as a standalone project or over offices or retail to again give some other options for this last piece and approving the two uh, side plans but in that they put a, a requirement that the parking for that would be no more than what the minimum uh, parking requirement is in the ordinance. The, the council looked at this item as a work session on April 17th where we discussed three options. And then from that work session to May 1st, with your direction, we looked at some, some modifications. At that time, we looked at taking uh, what the Planning Commission had recommended, but not applying that to the front store, so allowing the, the proposed uh, layout that had been given. And at that time, a new site plan exhibit had been presented on that May 1st meeting, which looked at the front portion but had nothing for the rear portion of the property. 
at the council direction, you asked us to come back to look at a one plan option for your consideration. This is the site plan that's presented on May 1st. Since that time, what we have worked out with uh, the, uh, per the petitioner was there would be only one exhibit. Uh, they feel that the sit-down restaurant is probably the most viable option, and so only one exhibit is being proposed now instead of two. So I need to make mention that in, in the development agreement, we'll need to change that language so there's only one uh, site plan exhibit rather than two. Uh, their recommendation also, or their request, is that the, the uh, commission's language about the m maximum or minimum parking be completely removed and that the site plan exhibit as shown would be the exhibit uh, added to the development agreement. As we looked at it, we think that most of those items uh, are acceptable. We still have a concern, though, about adequately uh, providing buffering to the uh, properties to the south. In the proposed uh, example, they show that on the, uh, the narrower portion of the property, they would do a landscaped area there, which exceeds 20 foot. One of our concerns is while the ordinance has a minimum of 10 foot landscape setback, we feel, based on how the properties are to the south of this, that that 20 foot setback should be applied also to that all that south property line of the, of the undeveloped lot. What that would mean if you look at the drawing is that little red line would show approximately that 20 foot setback. We're not concerned as, as we've discussed um, and looked at this of limiting the number of parking stalls. We think however they lay, they lay out the property we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out by itself and so in our recommendation, we're, we're not uh, talking about keeping the Planning Commission's recommendation of limiting the minimum parking to the maximum. We're taking that and our recommendation out, but we do feel it's important to have that 20-foot landscape uh, buffer on the back part of the property. So in your consideration, the uh, lettering in black is really uh, both parties feeling of how things should take place in terms of the revisions. Uh, the one site plan being the new concept plan for both the front and back piece, revising the language with four signs at the 375 square feet, with one sign having two business, businesses on it, amending the building ele elevations what they submitted, amending the uh, uh, agreement to have five, a maximum of five buildings, adding the multiple family dwelling as an option for consideration in the future. The white is what staff feels is still important to keep in the, in the, in the development agreement, and that is the 20-foot buffer on the vacant lot. Any questions? I, I do. I, I think it might be well if you would also explain the other requirements for buffering in addition to the landscaping uh, setback. I think there's a fencing. In the, in the development uh, agreement, like. yeah, in the development agreement, there's a seven-foot masonry wall that's required along that south property line. And so the first three lots have, have installed that already. And so this would continue on because that's still an item in the development agreement of that type of fencing. So that will go along the whole back southern property, property right. even even the parts that are running north and south, right? Okay. That back lot. What, what size? Again, what? Seven foot tall. Seven foot are the others 20 foot uh, setback? No, the others have a 10 foot setback. 10 foot is the minimum of the ordinance. That, that other area has Mill Creek between it and the fence, whereas as you get further to the south, you don't have the Mill Creek as it adjacent, the adjacent <laughs> use. And what, what about what, the I'm sorry, Mill Creek, what is that? Um, let me just go back to this. Uh, so where you look at uh, um, Popeyes, Right along the border of the property is, runs Mill Creek. And so where, where Mill Creek existed, a fence was not required. And then once Mill Creek started heading south and pulling away from the property line, then the, the screening fence was required. You know what Mill Creek is? A big ditch. A big, okay. <laughs> all right. Can I just ask a clarifying question? Um, so um, what's the thinking of having the 20 foot on the south side and then the difference between the east side there where there's also residences? 
In, in this side, we're, we're looking at the distance from homes, and we're also looking at the, the landscaping that's already there, the trees and everything else that exists. Where on the south side, it doesn't have as much. Uh, Mr. Montgomery, why why are we why are we asking for? I mean, I get I get your point about protecting the um, uh, the, the neighborhoods, but um, I, I wonder why are we asking for that extra ten feet? I mean, how many parking slots are, will we be taking away from from the development by doing that? It will depend on how the final design works out. Um, under this drawing, it would be eleven stalls. If, they, if the building changes some configuration or changes its orientation, they may have more stalls than what they're showing on this. And we're saying it doesn't matter how many stalls they end up having. We'll, we'll say that's fine, but we feel the, the boundary is important. What it does, it, it keeps the delivery areas and those back of house things further away uh, from, from the properties and allows the trees and other things to be planted to help be an initial buffer. Am I correct in assuming also that this is also going to help eliminate some of that blacktop that was trying to be, uh, you know, mitigated because of? Yeah, it know, still allows for those type of, of detention of things to take place, but it's mainly to create that area for trees to be planted for buffering to take place, so that noise, lights, okay. the service area of the buildings. So I, um, oh, I'm so, excuse me. Oh, I'm fine. Good. Go ahead. I, I get I get the point about protecting the neighborhoods. I I don't know that I agree with uh, uh, requiring that extra ten feet of of buffering um, if uh, the minimum requirement is ten. Um, I you know I wonder about the economic impact of this development. Uh, also, can you speak to that by any by any chance? Well, I don't have the total numbers. I think one of the things is whenever you look at this project was said, if it was not for a specific design, we would not have rezoned this commercial. These were all homes that were along this side with neighbors to neighbors. Once you introduce commercial, you introduce nighttime activities, trash, pickup, lights, service all those other things that no one really counted on when they, when they bought that home. So you're trying to figure out how can we allow that to, to take place and still mitigate those impacts of the lights, of the noise, of, of pickup hours that may be early in the morning, late at night. And so those are things we felt were appropriate. That's why the seven foot wall, that, that makes a, a better neighbor than a fence that the wind blows down and the constant question of, well, who's going to fix the fence now? Who's going to do this between the neighbors? The other thing I think is that in, in looking at site layouts, and these are things that, that each development needs to look at, the city also charges a, a stormwater impact fee, and that's based on the amount of hard surface. So the more hard surface, they'll be paying that, that monthly impact fee of, of runoff. The less hard surface, they reduce that cost. So if you can have an opportunity to, to meet your needs of parking to make the facility work, but not over, over park it or over hard surface where you then pay an additional monthly t fee for that hard surface, you know, that's for the, for the developer to balance out and say, okay, what works out the best for us as we look at the initial cost and the long-term cost. Right, but, the, but it's clear the developer in this case is asking for the 10 foot, not the, 10, not the 20 feet, correct? Well, they're meeting the minimum. They're asking to meet the minimum ordinance. So I guess the savings could be their prerogative. That could be, right? if, if the neighborhood impact is not a concern. And is there information about the economic impact of this development? Uh, no, not really. No? No, not really. The best we have would be the Minakazi study that was done, if you remember, where it talked that the real financial impact to the city is the more building you have, the better economics it is for the city. More parking is a discount that doesn't do anything in terms of, of land value per acre. And so that, that's just a balancing test. So I, 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 I'm sure all of us remember the houses that used to be there. And I remember driving through there every day and not appreciating the way that street looked. And when these uh, businesses went up, uh, I think it's been as important as what's happened just a little bit farther to the west with the Winko area and just really added so much benefit to that to that area and whatnot. 
So I, I personally hope that we could uh, honor those contributions uh, from the developers and you know, if, if uh, there's a way to, uh, well, you know, that's just kind of personally how I feel. I'll okay. leave it at that. What? Popeyes has a fence, correct? They have a fence for a majority. What does Freddy's have? Freddy's has the fence also. Oh. So both Arby's and Freddy's and a portion of Popeyes has that masonry wall. But we're asking, Arby's has a wall? Uh-huh. Okay. And this development will have the same wall. Yeah, it'd be continuation. That was that's in the development agreement as it exists when it was originally proposed. Is okay. that is that are those trees behind the, the setback? Is that kind of a buffer there, of trees? Yeah, that does some of the yards of those yeah. of those neighbors. And then the eleven stalls that could possibly be four footed. Those are the eleven right there with the red line going Correct. through them, yeah. right? Councilmember White, you've been cut off a couple times. Yeah, so. I just want to go back to Councilmember Chaburka's question, and I, I don't understand why we are not buffering the, the houses to the east. East side? Uh, I think, frankly, that's one of the areas we looked at, again, with what has been developed in their backyards, knowing that a wall would be there and that generally utilities and services happen at the back of the building, not to the side. The commercial property. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I mean, and I apologize, I'm just looking on Google Earth, um, but I'm not seeing a huge distance difference between the ones on the south and the ones on the east. And I'm not arguing particularly for either thing. I'm just wondering, is there, I mean, maybe the Google image is out of date or something, but is there not, or is there a big difference between how There's far, not a big difference, no, there's not. How far the houses are? On the setback, if we went 15 feet, would that be a drastic change? Instead of the I mean, those are just decisions just that you need to feel what, feel comfortable with. Uh, the intent is just to try to create some additional buffering, and if, if you feel that's not important, then that's that's your decision. Would we have to make that change tonight, then? With well, the, the ordinance is 10 feet. The ordinance is what? Sorry, is 10 feet. Uh -huh, okay. So it would be just deleting what I have highlighted in white as the staff's recommendation versus the petitioner's recommendation. It really uh, governs on what development that second project comes in. Yeah, well, we really don't know what will happen. They're proposing that it would be most likely a sit-down restaurant would, would take place there. And uh, like I said, it, it could have a different orientation rather than the one they show, which could change parking. So we really don't know what the numbers would be. And so that's why we don't want to talk about numbers at all. We just want to say, here's, the, here's an item of protection, and leave it at that. Maybe we could listen or uh, hear from the developer, and you can stand by uh, in case you're wanted again. Is that sure. right? I'll be right there. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Chair, members of the Ogden City C Council. My name is Brandon Whalen. I'm with Hawkins Companies out of Boise, Idaho. Thank you for the opportunity to be here uh, before you again today. When we were here on March 1st, um, I had brought uh, uh, a site plan that really just showed the Verizon parcel, and there was a new configuration uh, that Mr. Montgomery had not had an opportunity to provide comment on. So at that point in time, you would ask me to forward a copy of the site plan to Mr. Montgomery for his comments, uh, merge that with the rest of the property so you could get a little bit more of a holistic look uh, at, at the property or the project that we're developing. And so when we married those two together, this, this is the image um, that we have. Um, we provided that to Mr. Montgomery, and he provided comments back on the width of landscaping islands, uh, moving the trash receptacle for the Verizon store. Um, you know, he mentioned that you can see it in yellow, the seven foot tall masonry wall that will go around the border of the property. And I had heard at the May 1st meeting about landscaping. And so at that point in time, we, we included that 10 foot landscaping uh, that was required by the development agreement. And, and we showed that. Um, so we think that the seven foot tall masonry wall coupled with that 10 foot of landscaping um, is 
the same standards that were required of the other developments within this development. And so we thought that that would be create consistency and would be fair for everybody within the development. And so we incorporated all of these comments that Mr. Montgomery had generated into the site plan and resubmitted that to him. The only one that's outstanding that he brought up that I think is an excellent point is there's a little bit of ambiguousness on the drive aisle, either, you know, going, you know, either coming in off of 12th or, or coming from one of the side streets. And so I think that we can work with city staff and, and the other users within the center and come up with a coordinated plan that lets drivers know a very safe, defined pattern through there. And so I think he brought up a great point there, and that's something that we can refine as well. Uh, he also made comments about that the access point to 12 won't change, and that was just our graphics design person trying to grab an image. And so we're not proposing to, to change the access there at all. So that is the, the plan that we're proposing for you. Um, aside from the extra landscape strip, I think the, the seven foot tall masonry wall really will do a, a good job of, of making good neighbors because it's a good sound barrier. You're not gonna see lights going through there. Um, it will really keep the commercial uses contained with on the commercial use and keep those residential uses residential in, in, in nature. So with that, um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to present this plan to you, and I would stand for any questions that you may have. Many, any questions for Mr. Whalen? What, are, what about the I, delivery trucks? Uh, where would they come in if you developed this? I, I think that the, the lineup for the restaurant on the, uh, the right side of it is going to be the service side there. So th that's probably most likely where the service entry would be for that building. Um, for the Verizon, just on the south side of it, I, I don't think um, they really take a lot of deliveries. I think a, like a UPS or a, a FedEx truck, something small, uh, but on a fairly consistent basis makes deliveries for them. What's your feeling about the 15 foot setback on the south side? Well, um, I, I, I think it's ab uh, above and beyond what was expected of everybody else in the center. Um, I, I think that the, the masonry wall will really do a good job. The existing neighbors, you're probably not hearing complaints from the existing neighbors because Popeyes, Freddy's, and Arby's have learned to be good neighbors. Uh, and, and, you know, if, if the neighbors had an issue, um, you know, maybe they worked it out, hopefully so. Um, but I think that the separation of that masonry wall, you see that a lot on freeways. The closer you can get it to the no noise source, the better of job it does of deflecting it. And so I think that having that wall there on the property line close to where the cars are, it will do a good job uh, in, in buffering those sounds and, and blocking those from the residential uses. How, how do you pronounce your last name again? Uh, Waylon. 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 Uh, do you have any any comments uh, on the economic impact of this uh, development? The whole. I, I know from from my perspective as the developer for this parcel, we're looking to buy all of the parcel, and for that to make sense, we have to use all of the parcel for commercial uses. Now, we do have a lease, a 3,000 square foot lease with Verizon, but there is a balance of the property that we haven't def defined a, a user for yet. But our success <clears throat> as a company in this project really depends on finding somebody for that back parcel. And I think the economics of the deal make it pretty favorable for somebody to want to locate back there. No, you don't have street frontage, um, but you've got a very busy shopping center. And I think that we can find the right person um, for use in that back of that property. And if we can do that, the economics will then, as a company, will take care of itself. As, as, a, as a land use planner, I look at the initial development of the building cycle. You know, there's jobs there, there are retail jobs. And, you know, if this is not the highest and best use, uh, maybe tomorrow a better, more efficient use of this property will come and we'll take this down and, and move forward. So nothing's permanent. It's, it's, you know, every community is continually getting better and stronger and hopefully this diversifies not only the neighborhood and the shopping center, but the community as well. Uh, and hopefully this is, will be a contributing factor, uh, a co contributing member of the, of the neighborhood. Mr. Whalen, we've cut you off on your presentation. Um, maybe we'll let you continue to. No, to I, I was, I was open or... for any questions that you may have. Um, I, I'm largely in agreement with with the conditions as Mr. Montgomery has presented them. Other than the the additional landscape buffer, I think that the 10 foot that everybody else was required to develop under would would be fair for us as well. And that seven foot masonry 
uh, wall, I, I believe, is the great equalizer. And that really will make good neighbors of commercial and residential people across the property line. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, really, the development of the second project is could change that whole perspective there. How many parking would be allowed in that area it depends on what you put in that uh, unit. So. Okay. Thank you. I think I have another question for Mr. Mr. Montgomery. Okay. So now that yeah, we've combined the two into one. Uh huh. Where do we sit with the Planning Commission's recommendations of number of stalls? Well, again, what we're recommending is, is different from what the Planning Commission recommended to you. So after we've had our work <coughs> sessions and the, the meeting May 1st, as the planning staff, we're saying that we feel that... Uh, is it an increase to the number of parking stalls? If, if this configuration, is it an increase from what the Planning Commission... Yes, it would be. But we're, we're saying that given the layout, given what's trying to be accomplished and the flexibility needed to remove the discussion of the number of parking stalls, let the ordinance, the ordinance says here's the minimum and you can meet that or, or go above and not discuss parking stalls as an issue. If I might interject uh, to Councilmember White, the Planning Commission's recommendation still is live and, and available to us. It just has not been talked about much today. Um, that hasn't changed because they made that recommendation at the end of their meeting and, and it didn't change. Um, planning staffs uh, changed because we asked them to uh, two weeks ago uh, to get with the developer and to try to find some kind of a consensus, which uh, I think they did come together on some points. Uh, I'm not sensing a lot of uh, movement on the part of the developer, but I, but I think you did. For the planning staff recommendation moved in that direction. Is that, is that accurate? Uh -huh. So I, I think there still are three um, recommendations that we could choose from today. Uh, and if it, if it might be beneficial, uh, we did talk to the planning commission about what was taking place with this item, so they're they're aware that there's other proposals out there that their recommendations have been forwarded, but you have the ultimate decision in what would be the final outcome of the, the project. And, and sit-down restaurant could be sit-down restaurant and, uh, and alcohol as well? Correct. We have a situation like that already that's happened in a neighborhood, and I just, um, I'm very cautious of putting without the proper, I, I guess, buffers and, and all of that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually going back to what Council Member Chaburka said. I, I, I think we need to maybe buffer the other side as well. So that's. However, and and if I'm thinking the same place, the the other sit-down restaurant that serves alcohol had had promised certain things before that was developed, and those haven't been. Implemented and so yeah, I, whereas this is clearly defined But we haven't determined that that's going to be a sit-down restaurant Right that could change yeah. over and the we won't determine it. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing I, I did kind of want to point out also is, is since there is no uh, uh, Company ready to go into that spot um, the uh, We could prognosticate all day long and still get it wrong and probably will, because we just never know. I mean, you know, the, the years on the planning commission, we try to look ahead, and it invariably changes. And this has this development agreement or this development overlay has changed every time there was a new uh, tenant that was, that came to be, and I thoroughly expect it's going to again. So, <laughs> higher. So, so, I, I, I'm sorry. I do have the. Uh, uh, it, it is still unclear uh, about the comment from uh, Councilmember Chaburka about that buffering. Then, so what? What is the buffering on the east side then? Uh, for, on the east side of that. On the east side. Uh, that southern partial. Yes. Uh, currently, is at 10, per, 10 feet. So ten feet is the buffering. On the east. The wall. Plus existing. And the wall. <laughs> the seven. The seven foot wall. So the same as the south. 
Well, South would be at uh, the staff recommended 20. Right, right. The seven foot recommend wall. 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. The developer is doing it the same way. And but why, why would, I, I, I'm confused as to why it was kind of floating around here that there was no buffering on the east, protecting those it's homes. It's only a 10 foot, and I don't understand the, the reasoning why we buffered on the... I, I can so probably I can I, uh, yeah I just want to, to clarify that. my point too just um and I, one of my major concerns when we first talked about this in the work session was understanding that there would be some kind of buffer and I think there was two extremes on the two plans that we saw at that time there was one plan that was shown to us that didn't have any apparent buffer because I didn't know all the stipulations behind what they would need to have and then there was the other one that was the planning commission's recommendation that made it all landscaping, right? So now um, we have a little bit of what I see as a compromise, but maybe it's because I didn't understand the original requirements, right? That there's the 10 feet and the seven foot masonry wall. And so my question really was, I, I wasn't trying to advocate on the side of either one. I was just wondering why they were different. Oh, okay, just 10, to clarify 10, 10 on one side and 20 on the other. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, can I, I think I can probably address that. At least I think I can. The, uh, the houses on the south, uh, it is their side yard that is, that is directly adjacent to that southern property line of this development. Side yard setbacks are much narrower than rear yard setbacks, which is what you're dealing with on those homes that are on the east. So they'll be, you know, they'll have all their rear yard setback in the in the in the yard of the home and therefore that 10 foot setback isn't as as important because they're further away from it naturally okay that makes sense no i don't, I don't from google it doesn't look like that's the case mm -hmm. but maybe i'm wrong I i'm agree. just delayed yeah, see, google i can't see through the trees on that one I don't know. They're both. Oh, can i just both side yard can you just make one comment yeah we need to simplify this thing somehow <laughs> Uh, the only <laughs> I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to simplify it, but I will add on to what uh, Councilmember White said. In our district, in my district, and in our neighborhood, there is an active example of where uh, the council does not did not have the opportunity to review the site plan. There is conflict. We do hear about it a lot. It's where residential abuts commercial, and we were promised that there would be things that happened. We were told, and I, this is no offense to you or your, your character, but you're told one thing and it turns out to be another, and you know we hear from the residents a lot. And that is really sticking with me right now. Um, I Clearly, I want this development to be successful, no doubt about it. I just want to make sure that we don't run into that same exact example and we don't look back in the future and say, we had the exact same example in our, right in our, in our past and we didn't learn from it, we made the same mistake. I don't know if that's what's coming, but it's, that's the thing that's making me nervous and what makes me lean toward the 20 foot. Let, let me do this. No, no offense to what goes in there. I don't want to say alcohol versus non-alcohol. I just want to say I, we just get a lot of complaints. So, it, and, it, and I'm not sure these, I'm not, I mean, I'm just not sure that you're, we're comparing apples to apples. I'm not sure when that site plan was, a, well, I don't, I don't even remember, did that come before us, that site plan? I don't remember that. So I, I, I'm, I, again, I don't think that this was nearly as thought out or rehashed as, as this site plan is. So I, I, I also think can, that can, the, the, can I uh, kind of put the sure. brakes on this? I, th I think we're deliberating at this point, but we still have a, a input that we I'd select to, to hear from people in the audience if they have something they'd like to add before we get it get too deep into the deliberation part more is that all right mm -hmm. so is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak to this okay now we can carry on <laughs> i just wanted to make sure we so we're doing i, I was just going to say that I, if i if i think uh i it, the project you guys are citing about having co issue complaints from neighbors uh, those complaints are related to noise, I believe. And I don't know that the, this extra 10 feet of buffering are going to do anything for the noise were this to be actually a restaurant with alcohol and, and a lot of noise going on there. To me, those extra 10 feet are not going to do anything. Uh, I think a noise wall is what would prevent that from bothering the neighbors. So that's just 
one point I wanted to make. Maybe we ought to go to 15. It's the, but, it defeats but, the purpose of, of the added. Um, it, you still don't get the, the added uh, cars in there. But, well, it all depends on what goes in there. Uh, but again, I think that. the issue, or the issue for me, is that we've allowed people to, we've allowed other businesses to perform a certain way or, or, or develop a certain way, and now we're trying to change it on the last person, and I don't feel that that's correct. I don't feel that's right. And, and yeah, whether you go 20, 18, 16, 14, 12 feet, it's different than what is on the other sides, and, and, and that's an issue for me. I just wanted to speak to the resident that did talk um, at the last time we were talking about this, if it was last week, I can't remember now. We've ago. talked about this quite a bit. Um, and what he was really concerned about is, I mean, what I heard him say, I could be wrong, is that he was very worried about there not being anything back going on back there, basically. That he was worried about it being kind of a dead end. He was worried about things that were happening there now because it was vacant. So I think to, to that point, I'm just saying I think that having actual a business there of any kind could help to alleviate some of the worries that those residents had about people just loitering in the back of a building and doing I don't know what, you know, nobody knowing what's happening back there. So I may have heard him wrong, but I guess that's what I'm Well, uh, if, if I might just, I think we probably uh, all have our opinions um, at this point pretty well settled. Um, I think that uh, I, I appreciate um, Mr. Montgomery's compromise. I think it is, it is still uh, much more in harmony with what the Planning Commission's intent was to eliminate hard surface, uh, some of that heating that happens because of that. Um, the, the idea that this was a, uh, an overlay zone that wouldn't, I mean, we didn't just rezone this to commercial. We rezoned this to an overlay commercial so that we did have some additional uh, tools to mitigate some of, the, some of the, the impacts that this thing would have. If we are saying that those aren't important, then I think that's one way of doing it. I, I still maintain that they are important. Um, it also honors the Planning Commission's recommendation who looked at this in depth, um, visited the site, and, uh, and made their recommendation to us. It also, uh, it takes the heat off of the Verizon project initially, and if there's uh, another use that comes in that the, develop the developer brings to us uh, that this will just absolutely not work for, I'm sure he'll bring it back to us and tell us and give us an opportunity to make some adjustments. I would propose that we we go forward with the uh, the planning staff recommendation for those reasons. I think uh, I think that's the best solution. Plus, we also honor the neighbors that are not here to speak for themselves today that we also represent. So I, that's that's my opinion, and I think that's that's why so I have an opinion. Twenty feet setback, or that would or? be with a twenty foot setback. But that's still in mind that there is no no potential. Uh, tenant yet so <laughs> and that's why I brought up the question of the, the parking mm -hmm. I mean and going back to the original planning they're higher yeah. and, 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 and with all due respect I, I do appreciate your uh, your position and your comments I, I have a different view and a different opinion and so I which is the opposite <laughs> <laughs> so I um, if you're ready for a motion, I'm ready for a motion. You know, I I, I would like to make a motion that we adopt this uh, proposed uh, ordinance 2018-8, uh, approving this um, land agreement, development agreement, with a noted change to reduce the setback on that south side to 10 feet instead of 20 feet. Um, yeah, can we just get... Does, you you uh, looked at uh, potential ordinance language. Does that meet the intent of what you had intended on that one? 
Well, I, I don't think you need to change uh, the 10 feet. I think it, it is what it is. Yeah. So it can be, um, as the, the language that I had sent, it, it is the ordinance 2018-8 um, with the revised site plan uh, as included for Exhibit C. Uh, that's the, the piece of the development Got agreement. It. So that let me change. correct that, please. Uh, thank you, sure. uh, Mr. Symes. I then make a motion that we adopt proposed resolution 2018-8. Um, uh, uh, the site for the site plan, which includes Exhibit C of this development agreement. Uh, with with the following modification, which is uh, the the Planning Commission's recommendation removal of the minimum parking requirement as specified in Condition Number One. Okay, everybody understand the motion. Yep. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Lopez, second by Councilmember Blair, uh, to uh, adopt Ordinance 2018-8 um, with the modifications made by the developer, essentially. Uh, and you've got that, right? Okay. So go ahead and call the roll. <laughs> so is, so the, I, I, yeah. is the minimum a parking still intact or the maximum? The, t the, the parking. It's 10. it's 10. So it's the 10 foot? Just the 10 foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Councilmember Chaburka? Aye. Councilmember Lopez? Aye. Councilmember Stevens? Aye. Councilmember White? No. Councilmember Blair? Aye. Vice Chair Nadolsky? No. Chair Heyer? No. It passes four to three. Good luck with your project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item on our agenda is public comments. This is an opportunity to address the council on any topic. Are there any takers? Scouts, big opportunity here. <laughs> Okay, seeing no movement, comments from the mayor. Uh, just a quick invitation for everybody to come out to what is the biggest outside party we have all year. The marathon <laughs> is this week. Um, weather looks good. We've had our fair share of uh, rainy days for that event, so we're, we're more than due for a beautiful spring day and, uh, and an opportunity to celebrate some amazing accomplishments. So I hope everybody takes a chance to come down and get involved. Okay. Uh, well, well, let me do this first. Uh, tonight, if you were to sign up for any of these activities, tonight, midnight, is the time to do that. So, uh -huh. or it'll cost you more at the expo. <laughs> so, okay. Any other comments from council? I was just going to say that I thought <clears throat> when you were saying the biggest outdoor event of the year, you were referring to the mayor's walk, which is on Friday. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Not even we, close. We just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Rube are both big, so we can use the walk. We won't be running on I'll Saturday. I'll be there as well. Um, you know, kidding aside, uh, I have no hard feelings with how the vote went. I, I, we never do. I, don't, I think that's a hallmark of the council. We had a good discussion. It is what it is. I just wanted to say thanks to Greg for, uh, for your uh, goodwill in negotiating and, and giving. It seems though you gave more than you were hoping today. But... Uh, in a world where we don't often give, we almost always take. I, <clears throat> I personally just appreciate that right today. So thank you. Any other council member comments? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment that I think I, I, the reason I voted no, just as a as a, a quick comment, is that I think if we were going to go back to the original ten foot or yeah buffer, that we should have looked at a minimum or a maximum parking. Yeah. Parking. Yep, I agree. That that was, that was what I think was given up, and we didn't get anything <laughs> for it. That was my thought. Chair Heyer, I just want to echo Councilmember Nadolski's comments. I want to thank uh, Mr. Montgomery for his work. And uh, if you can extend that to your staff and the Planning Commission, I really appreciate it. Thank you. It is our practice if we ever go against the Planning Commission recommendation, we send them a letter and uh, detail why. And so Mr. Symes will be working on that. Um, and so. Thank you. 
Can I just um, make a quick comment about the Diversity Commission? I just um, am really excited that it's been about a year, right, since that commission was put in place. I had the honor of serving on the nominating committee before I was ever on the city council and just meeting the most amazing group of people that are willing to serve us as the diversity commissioners. And I'm really excited that we're going to have them come and um, do a report or um, share a work session with us. So that's all. Congratulations to those. People. Thanks for the recommendation to have them come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Okay. I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Blair, seconded by Vice Chair Nadolsky to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?